you are here for Crafting the Perfect Proposal. My name is Melanie Adcock. I live in Noonan, Georgia, um, about 45 minutes from downtown here. Um, and I appreciate you all showing up. And uh, just to let you know, uh, remember that my talk rocks. I appreciate the feedback. And uh, my Twitter is MGA Creative. And I'll have the slide link and my email and everything at the end. So if I don't answer, I'm not able to answer your question because they're going to be doing the closing remarks at four. So feel free to reach out to me in person. OK, I'm not doing too, too great with the clicker. There we go. Um, who am I? Um, I'm a co-owner of Adcock Creative Group with my husband. Um, I've been a full-time freelancer for nine years. Uh, I wish I could say I decided to quit the corporate world and become a freelancer. I got laid off in 2010. And woohoo, yeah. And the great thing about that, I actually say the happiest day of my life was November 16th, 2010, the day I got laid off. Um, because I would have never had the courage to do this. And uh, I haven't looked back. And I'm glad to say that last year I earned four times what I was making in my last job. And just got rid of that client. The, the client that laid me off, of course, didn't realize that they needed an IT person and a web person when they laid me off, so they hired me back. And uh, I gave them a price because I didn't want to work for them anymore, and they took it. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> But they are uh, actually, as of last night, no longer my client. Ironically, I'm working now with their competitor. Um, I have been a speaker at WordCamp Atlanta many times, uh, WordCamp Miami, and WordCamp Birmingham. Um, just a little plug for WordCamp Birmingham, that's in August. It's a smaller WordCamp, but the quality of speakers is like Atlanta, um, but only on a smaller scale. My, there's my email address, Melanie at Adcock Creative Group. And I'm also the organizer of the new meetup in Noonan. So we've just started having meetups. Our next one will be at the end of May. So join, go to meetup.com and join our list if you feel like driving to Noonan. OK, why this session? Um, you should always do a session on things you hate doing so you get better at it. I hate writing proposals. I've always hated writing proposals. I love you, you're getting off the phone. You're real excited about this project. You know you just hit it off with the client. You know they're going to choose you. Um, they've said it over the phone. It sounds perfect. Send me a proposal. You get off the phone, and now you've got to write the proposal. Um, and that is why this talk. I hate writing proposals. I'd avoid it. Oh, well, really, I need to do laundry. Um, uh, well, I really need to do these client tasks. I really need to do fill in the blank, because I hate it, but I always give my client, you will have a proposal by this date, because I have to do that, so I'll write it, and I don't keep putting it off. So when I hate doing something, I try to figure out how to make it faster and how to automate it. So that is what I worked on the last year. So I'm here to share what I've learned. Okay, a proposal versus a quote. If you're sending uh, sending a sheet of paper with a bunch of lines with all the things you're going to do with, with prices next to it, that's a quote. That's a laundry list that they can get out their red pen and say, well, I really don't need this much. I really don't need that. And they, they actually set a lower price for themselves. A proposal positions you as an expert. It is going to be a, a general outline of everything that you're going to do not how you're going to do it, but what you're going to do. And it presents the value of the service that you're providing. Because you're not the technician to do exactly what they want. You're, you're there to do the best for what the goal they want to reach. And what's not included? Avoid technical terms. I mentioned WordPress one time. That's in my contract, that I'm using the WordPress content management system to do that. 
I'm not listing the plugins I'm going to use. I may say I'm going to set up a membership system, but I'm not saying I'm using Membarium. Or um, I'm setting up an online learning system. I'm not saying I'm going to use LearnDash. Because what, what happens if you figure out they, they have a change request, and now you figured the best way to handle that change request is not to use LearnDash, but to use WooCommerce Sensei. But you already said in the proposal that you were going to use this. So I keep things of what I'm going to do, not how I'm going to do it. And don't, you know, like, don't list plugins by name. Don't itemize costs unless you're breaking the project down into phases. And you can then say, this is the proposal for phase one the price. This is for phase two, we're going to do this. Phase three, we're going to do this. And that way they can see what the total price is, but you're not giving them the option of crossing things out. Okay, what to include? Now, this is just suggestions. A lot of this comes from WP Elevation. I'm a member of WP Elevation. I have been for uh, four to five years. Um, if you don't know what WP Elevation is run by Troy Dean, um, it is a um, online course and support system for WordPress uh, freelancers. Basically, it teaches you how to run your business. And I learned so much on that. I also have a personal business coach, and a lot of you have probably watched uh, Nathan Ingram's talk on ta um, Taming the Whirlwind. Nathan is my um, coach my business coach. So he's my one-on-one -on -one business coach. And so I've taken what I've learned from Nathan. I've taken what I've learned from WP Elevation. I've taken from what I've learned from webinars here and there, word camps, and kind of put it all into one place. I do a business app snapshot. This tells me I actually listened to the client when they told me about their business. I listen, I ask all the questions that I need the answers to to write the proposal. So I say, tell me about your business. Tell me about your ideal client. Tell me about the client that you get the most of. It's an online store. You know, what's your demographic? I do a lot of churches. I'm known as the church lady. So I do a lot of churches. So one of my questions for churches, well, tell me about your congregation. What's the demographic? What demographic are you trying to reach with this website? You know, we'll come up with a plan for that. Um, so I actually take what they've told me and I write it up in the business snapshot. That says I listen to them. Uh, business needs and target audience needs. What are they looking to get out of the website? And that's like two or three bullet points usually. It's not like an essay. It is just, are they getting more leads? Do they want to get more website visitors? Do they want more um, butts in the pews? You know, if it's a church. <laughs> what are they looking for? Um, what does the target audience need? If, the, if it is a church website or if it's a retirement community website, what are, what are they providing on that homepage of the website to get people to choose that retirement community? Um, what, are we, what are we focusing the website on? Who's that ideal client? So I just, it's just two or three bullet points, um, usually unless it's a, you know, a huge project. Then I go into the scope of work. Some people call it a statement at work. Um, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to show you an example of this. Um, this is basically just a breakdown of all the tasks that I'm going to do um, for the website. Am I going to add an event system? And am I going to add WooCommerce? Am I going to do an email uh, sign up? Am I going to do basic on page SEO? Just simple, a simple description of everything I'm going to do. Um, on the project. Then I call it an investment. I don't call it price, don't call it fees, because they are making an investment in their business. So this is what they are investing in. And that's where I just list out the prices and the optional upgrades. So I'll say, okay, this project is this. Um, I offer premium WordPress hosting with WP Engine or Liquid Web. That's this much a year. Um, then I say, okay, well, I have monthly maintenance plans. They start at $99 a month. At $99, you get this much. At $199, you get this much. At $499, you get this. And I, so it's, they're not hearing wait maintenance plans after launch. Well, you have to pay me money to take care of your website. 
I've talked to them about that from day one. Then also include a copy of my contract. If you're not using a contract, shame on you. Steal mine, start using it, make it your own. You've got to protect yourself. Okay, let's go ahead and um, this is why I talk about let the client write it. If you know what you're going to be putting and how your proposal is written, you know the questions to ask. Because you're going to ask them all the questions so you'll have all the answers and you can whip out a proposal. You don't have to sit there and think about it because they've given you all the information. Um, so I have an interview list before I meet. I have a, a cheat sheet one I use for retirement communities. I've done a lot of retirement communities, so I have a whole list for that. I do a lot of churches, so I have my church list. And then I have my regular, when they've cold called me or I've gotten a referral, then I do a little research, then I write up a list. And what, so when I talk to them on the phone for the first time, I have a list of questions that's going to help me write that proposal. I also have a website worksheet on my website. Um, it's actually straight from WP Elevation. I really haven't changed it all that much. Um, but it, it's, I've actually had people go right to my website, fill that thing out, and the first contact I've ever had with them was all the information I needed to write the proposal. And I get on their contact information and call them after I've gone through it, made my list of questions, set a time to talk to them, call them, and we take it from there. I get that mostly from churches. Um, I only write a proposal if I have a chance. I ask them, it used to scare the bejeebies out of me, to ask people their budget. It, how many people are still afraid to ask how much they're willing to spend? Okay, that's like my third question. What's your budget for this project? Sometimes I'm surprised when they say, oh, well, we're only able to spend, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars for this website. And you're like doing the little happy dance, you know, when it's just a little church website. Um, or you, you do, you know, what is the budget? Well, we don't really want to spend more than fifty thousand dollars and you're like, you know, try not to look like you're going to have a stroke in the chair across from them. Um, but uh, you're like, wow, that's great. Now, if I hadn't asked that, I probably would have totally underbid that, that um, job. But you also get to handle it for people who have unrealistic expectations. I only have a budget of $500. Well, my base site, my base price for a church site is around $5,000. So um, let's go ahead and talk about your project and what you need, and then I'm going to give you some suggestions of how you can accompli accomplish that task or at least get started with that budget. Nine times out of the ten, I still get that project because I'm willing to talk to them, willing to at least point them in the right direction. And they're like, when they go say, oh, well, I have to go do it all myself, you know, at Wix or Squarespace or... Um, I'm, ah, I don't really want to do that, but you know, I know how much it's probably going to cost because she's given me a ballpark around $5,000. We'll just go back. We'll find the money and we'll go back, back to her and she can do it all. Um, so I don't waste time on tire kickers. If I'm going to be competing you know, to the lowest common, I'm not going to be the cheapest person. I don't want to be the cheapest person. Um, I'm going to show you samples. Um, right now, I use better proposals. When I first started using an online system, I used BidSketch. Um, and then I switched over to better proposals because they had a lifetime deal on AppSumo for $39. And that was uh, about two, three years ago. And uh, so I jumped on that. And I really, really, really like it. like it a lot better than Bids BidSketch. But there's Proposify, there's so many different systems um, for that, and I'll, I'll have a list for you later on. I'm going to go ahead and show you, let me escape from here, and show you uh, better proposals. Let me get this and make it bigger here. Now what I do, because I do a lot of retirement communities and I do a lot of churches, I actually have, I, I did a, a proposal. And then I created a template out of it and just made everything generic. So when I go to do a retirement community, I just spin up a copy of it and make the changes, add and subtract things. And I could do a, um, a proposal in about 20 minutes. 
The fastest one I've done was the one I just did for a church in South Florida. I actually timed myself seven minutes from start to finish, $8,000 job. So, yay! <laughs> um, and uh, so let's go ahead and get into. Oh, oh, sorry, I can't see. There we go. Here's an example. This is a retirement community example. Um, you put your branding in, you can pick a background image, load up anything that you want, um, and I put the title, who it's written, written by, and then they start reading it. I'm gonna show you the, what the client sees first. It basically takes them in, and you can see all the things I did, the snapshot, um, the business needs and target needs, solution, um, I actually even put a project timeline in there um, because I, that's one of the questions I get a lot is, well, how long is this going to take? I want to make it very clear to the client that once we get to a certain point and I need stuff from them, um, content, images, uh, then uh, it's in their ballpark. So if they delay in that, it's going to delay in the timeline. Um, the investment, the mutual agreement, which is the contract, and then how do they sign? So uh, this one, you know, I just generically, name of community, um, that is energetic, carefree, independent retirement, lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. And this is stuff that they've told me, so I wrote it up. Or you could get it off their current website um, if they have one. Then I go on to the business and target audience needs. I list the, the business needs. Now they actually had, they have a really, really, really old website. Um, like we're talking 10 years old and they needed a lot of new features and these, these are the things that they wanted to be added to their website and then the target audience is only five bullet points it's got to be easy to navigate because most of their clients are like over 70 um, improved experience in mobile because right now they don't have that at all um, access to information about services just very generic of what we're going to solve. And then the solution, the scope of work. Um, this is what we're going to do. There's my WordPress right there. I mentioned WordPress there and I mention it in my contract. But it's just a list of what we're going to do. We're going to do a custom web design. We're gonna make it mobile friendly. We're gonna add a social media stack. We're gonna do an email sign up system. I'm not talking about how, I'm just talking about what we're going to do. Basic search engine optimization. I mean, I do that on every site that I do, but I also make them understand what the difference is between when I walk through this with them, that basic search engine optimization is, it's going to, if they search for that website, they're going to find it. It is not competitive keyword advanced SEO. And they don't know the difference, so you have to educate them on it. Additional things we're going to do, the, the you know, Google Search Console, Google Analytics, the stuff that you're going to um, connect the site maps, all that stuff. So then I go into the project timeline. I let them know that it's gonna take two weeks to do the design. It's going to take four weeks of development, one week of revisions, one week of testing. That's kind of a general guideline that I walk through. Now, I made this very, very generic um, for this sample. And then the investment. How much is the, the website? Um, what is the uh, hosting going to cost them? What is the monthly, pair, what, what's the recommended monthly care plan, dep depending on what I talk? They just need me to keep the website updated, WordPress, plugins, and they're going to add everything. I would recommend my $99 a month plan. If they need me to be actively involved, that starts at the $299. If they want a webmaster at their beck and call, that starts at $499 a month and goes up. Um, if they have more than one website, then, you know, they may be spending $1,000 a month, $2,500 a month. It all depends on their needs. You know, if they want that priority access to me, they want to be able to pick up the phone and call me instead of sending me an email. 
that's not a $99 a month plan. <laughs> that's, a, that's an email me a support ticket um, plan. If they want to be able to call me, they're going um, at any time during regular business hours. Um, they need to pay a little bit extra for that. And then my contract is um, what my proposal it kind of breaks everything down. Now, here's some key things to actually I keep adding to it. It's a ever changing thing because. You always meet that client that makes you think, oh, I need to put that in my contract um, to kind of keep them in your box that you set out for them. What's my proposal? What's the time frame? Um, do they want a rush job? Well, you're going to pay 45% more if you want like it done in two weeks because that's a rush job. Now, this used to be... I actually have one of these. It's an abandoned project. <laughs> it's like four years old. Um, a rabbit farm in Ohio. Uh, I think they just wanted a website because they uh, wanted to sell the farm. But uh, they just kind of disappeared. So if you ever have um, clients that disappear, then have a suspended and abandoned project clause in your proposal. If you don't hear, you email them an update like every Friday, open projects, I email them on Friday, let them know what I've done. Um, and I don't hear back from them for a month. So if I don't hear back from them for from a month, you know, it's considered, or actually say, I say paid, um, I have a different one, different, uh, let's see, within 30 days, I don't hear, you know, crickets, nothing um, for 30 days, then the, it's a suspended project. For me to pick that back up, they pay the other half. Because I ask for half up front on most projects, really big projects. We do 30, 30, you know, 33, 33, 30, 34. Um, but if I don't hear from them, they pay the other half before we pick it back up. Because I want to make sure I'm going to eventually get paid for that project if they're going to go, go dark again. Um, if I don't hear from them in 120 days, it's abandoned, done over. You know, do not pass go, do not collect. It's basically a new job. I talk about development, revisions. You have the people that never want the website to be done because they have one more change. So I have two rounds of revisions. After that, we go live. If you're on a care plan, we can do some tweaks for 30 days. So um, what's going to happen at launch? OK, compatibility, current, current browser versions. So. If the company happens to be running, you know, Internet Explorer 10 and uh, Windows XP, you know, we're, we're designing it for the latest, you know, the latest version of PHP, the latest version of uh, uh, MySQL, the latest browsers. Because you might have a client that needs it to be supported in an older browser. It does happen every once in a while. What, what if they need changes after launch? Well, I give them a 30-day, kind of a 30-day grace period before the monthly care plan kicks in that we do simple changes, things that take less than uh, 30 minutes, or you can set it as 15 minutes. Um, it's not, you know, well, I want a membership system. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. That's not a, that is not in the scope of work. We're going to make tweaks, change images, tweak text, things like that. Um, just because it's not working the, the way the client expected as far as um, a system on there does not make it a bug. So I actually define what a bug is. Um, a bug is when something is not working. It's an error in programming, a fatal error. You get, you know, something across the top I had recently with BuddyPress. So um, that, is an, that is an error that needs to be fixed. Um, you have issues after updates to WordPress, third-party codes, you know, different things like that. Now, here's a big one. Use of third-party images and photography. If you are not asking your clients where they got the images that they sent you, shame on you. You need to ask them what the providence is. Where did you get this image? And if they start with, a, well, I looked on Google, I did a search. I did a search for copyright-free images on Google, and I got all these from here. 
No, I won't touch them with a 10 foot pole. I actually offer stock photography as part of my um, price of one image per page because I have a subscription to iStock and I get the credits on AppSumo and um, the different deals they have with deposit photos. So I have a, a wide selection, plus I've been doing this for 15 years, so I have quite a stock photography library. Um, and I'd much rather use a stock photography if I don't know where they got that image. And that happened just this week. I had a client send me a picture of a park where they wanted to have me use it for an event. And I'm like, oh, and I just happened because they're, they're a um, retainer client. Where'd you get the picture? This is a great picture. Where'd you, who took the picture? We got it off their website. And I'm like, I can't use it. And they said, oh, well, it's a public website. <laughs> and I said, well, all websites are public if you can get to them. Does it mean you can use the picture? Um, well, we really want to use this picture. I said, well, then get on the phone and call. Call them. It was a local park. Get on the phone and call them and ask them for permission and get it in writing, and then I'll use it. Well, you know, it's on their website. They kept saying, I'm like, I am not going to do it. If, if you really, really, really want me to put it on there, I'm going to send you a piece of paper that says you acknowledge that this picture was sniped off the internet and that you know that there's possible copyright infringement if you put it on the website and I'm not holding Adcock Creative Group liable for that in any way, shape, or form. So when you get sued, or if you get sued, um, it's all on you. It is not on me. Well, you know, they'll just tell us to take it down. I said, well, not if it's a Getty image. They're going to send you a bill. Um, and uh, they don't do a cease and desist which is the normal train of thing. They just send you a bill from some random, random amount, like 2,000, 10,000, whatever, and you get on the phone, you're gonna pay something. Um, I'm not gonna pay anything. So why, I said, well, it's like two miles from where you are. Why at lunch do you not just drive down to the park with your iPhone and take a picture and then send it to me? Well, that's a great idea. <laughs> So uh, I'm like, I'm not going to deal with that. So that is probably one of the biggest thing. If you have not heard of the Getty letter, Google that. Write a little note. Google the Getty letter because um, Getty is like ruthless when it comes to people using their images and not having, which is iStock Photo, ironically, which I have a subscription to. Yes? It, it's in there. <laughs> it's in there. Yes, it's in there. But they're a, they're a client. Um, they're like my biggest retainer client. But I, I'm after them all the time. Churches are like the worst at stealing stuff. Uh, I think there's a church in the middle of nowhere that comes up with all these original ideas and all the other churches copy it. Um, so I, I see it all the time. I'm a member of... Um, Facebook groups with churches, and I don't know, at least once a week, I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> well, they don't mind, you know, we're a nonprofit. Yeah, it just means that they're just gonna go after you, and you can you afford a $150,000 fine per image? No. I actually even, I actually was the photographer on a project, of uh, HOA in Florida hired me to build them a website. I built the website, it was done, and then I waited. Well, they changed management companies like the month I finished the website. Well, I had gone to their community and I took all the pictures because they couldn't provide it. They didn't even have their logo. So I recreated their logo. I did um, uh, all the pictures. Well, they decided that, um, that they were just gonna let them use the management company because they were gonna give them a free website. I'm like, well, you still have to pay me. And they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll pay you. But, um, this gives us this and this and this and um, and I'm like okay and they were like well um, we want to use all your pictures and I'm like um, well I took them so I just can't give them to you I'll sell them to you because they actually and so I went through this and I actually gave them a documentation that gave them the right to use my pictures because I took them 
And that way, I actually went on and copyrighted them, so um, they're just like general, some general Florida pictures, because if somebody else starts using them, you know, they're my pictures, I took them. Um, and then you get into some terms of use and um, other legal, who owns it? I mean, WordPress is general license, um, so they don't own the code. Uh, plugin license and updates. Okay, I use a lot of premium plugins. And this is how I do it. If it's, if it's a unlimited license, for instance, I have Gravity Forms. It goes on every site I build. I do not charge the clients for it because I have a developer license. I put it on every site. Same with Beaver Builder. But if it's a specific plugin that has a renewal of every year that's specific to their website, then if they're on a care plan, that is included. I will pay it. If they choose not to, they get to use that for a year. That's part of the fee, because I count that in when I uh, do the, the amount. But after a year, they gotta get their own license. And I spell that out, and I actually tell them when it comes, to, comes time, I've figured out which ones it's gonna be. It might be a, Woo, a WooCommerce plugins. We know how affordable those are. And, uh, or it might be Events Ticket Plus, or it might be something that, that is a fairly significant plugin, or a big membership plugin, then I don't want to keep eating that cost if they are not a care plan. So um, if they're a care plan, then uh, on the care plan, even a 99, I'll pick up the cost because that's part of them working with me. And then on website security, you cannot guarantee that a site is never going to get hacked. I've had one site hacked, and that was the um, owner's password. It was a very, very simple password. When he had me set up the password, I told him, it's too simple. Well, it's easy for me to remember. I'm like, okay, but when it gets hacked, it's going to be extra for me to clean this off. And of course, yeah, it got hacked. It took about three years, but it got hacked. Um, and uh, I knew right away, because I was using WordFence, and uh, it, it immediately told me, went in, I changed his password to something about that long, um, and cleaned it all off, sent him a bill, and uh, then do reinforce the extra. And now, now he knows the importance of strong passwords. Um, hosting. I like to work with a set of, of reliable hosts. Um, if you've got Bob's Hosting, um, and I actually had a church that had a local hosting company who had absolutely no idea what they were doing, um, and they didn't have half the PHP libraries they had in there, it, and it was just a mess. It was a pain to deal with. It's like dealing with uploading to GoDaddy. I always have issues when I try to put it on GoDaddy. So. Um, uh, I actually list, I, these are my recommended hosts. If you're using something I'm not familiar with, I'm not going to guarantee that the site's going to run the way it does in development because I have no idea what that host provides. Ups, ups, site updates and backups. If you're not on a care plan, um, it's up to you to be responsible. Then I go into what is a care plan. Here's my offer, basic business and priority care, you know, how do you pay for it, cancellation at any time, um, uh, third-party services, if you get some marketing company to go in there and do stuff to the website and they screw it up, I'm not responsible to fix that. Um, that is gonna, that's beyond the care, care plan. Um, email deliverability. I'm not getting my contact form information. It's going to my spam box. My users aren't getting the information. Well, one of the things I do for almost all my clients is I set up Mailgun. I do a third party email service and I work with them to set up an account and that way when they get somebody that says they're not receiving the emails, you can actually go on the Mailgun and I said, well, yeah, they got it. They opened it at 9.38 a.m. So they did get it. And uh, they're like, you can tell that on there? I'm like, here, let me show you how, how you do that. And uh, it stops all the email deliverability issues. 
pretty easy to set up. Uh, they have a free level. They're one of the few um, third-party email services that still have a free level. Um, yeah, if you're in trouble with the law, I'm going to give them what they need. Um, domain names. It's their responsibility if they don't renew their domain name. Um, I always ask for them to make me an um, admin on their domain list if they have their own domain name. I prefer them to be responsible for their domain name, but I want to get emailed when things are uh, getting close to renewing. Just a reminder that this is coming up for renewal, so when you get the bill from GoDaddy to pay it. And this also gives me a chance to say, okay, about six months out from your domain name renewing, you're going to start getting, e getting real snail mail from the Domain Registry of America, or one of those other scammy things where they send you a bill for a domain name they don't, you're not registered with. I actually tell my clients about that. So I said, whenever you get something that requires your attention about your domain name, take two seconds, pick up the phone, call me, and ask me if it's real. And nine times out of 10, if it came in the mail, it's not real. GoDaddy is, if you're registered at GoDaddy, GoDaddy's never gonna send you snail mail to tell you that your domain is expiring. Now they'll send you 10,000 emails starting six months out, but they're not gonna send you a letter. And uh, even about the attribution link, um, identification, um, if they're gonna sue me, they're coming to Noonan, Georgia. Um, I'm not going to Frederick, Pennsylvania. I'm not going to, well, I would go to Hawaii. I have a client in Hawaii. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to Texas. They're coming to me if they have a dispute. Um, and my limitations of di damages or liability, servability, headings. I mean, these are all things um, that I got from my business coach plus WP Elevation uh, that I put in. And you should always um, take what you do, go to a lawyer, take what you've already written to a lawyer. Don't go to a lawyer and have them draw it up, take something that's already written, have them tweak it for you that fits your business model. And let's see. And this is kind of the dashboard of better proposals. Um, you have, uh, you have it, um, outstanding, accepted, lost. I don't really deal with the, the lost part. But you, they have a template marketplace, which is awesome. So if you do multiple things, like SEO and stuff, they have a um, template marketplace so you can just bring in any kind of template. They even have the WP Elevation template in here. So you can use that as a starting point. Copywriting, consulting, marketing, um, it gives you a great stop. And what I like about these online systems is every time they, the client opens the proposal, you get an email to let them know. You get to see how much time they spend on each section. So if they only spent 37 seconds on the contract part of it, you know you kind of need to go over that with them. Uh, I've had cl clients like read and read and read, and, uh, and then the ones that just click through and sign. Um, and then, let's see, go here. And the next steps is where they can sign. You get the option of whether or not you take payments online. Now, depending on the client, I'll ask them, do they want to pay online, do they want to send me a check? So if they say they're gonna, because they have to do paperwork and they have to send a check, which is fine, um, I just don't add the payment option. They sign it online and once I get that, then I give them their welcome, I set up their welcome package, send it to them, this is everything I need to start the project. So let me go back to here. Now, if you're just starting out, don't, get all shiny object syndrome and start buying stuff, okay? I have uh, a PDF version of this. Use that and just create PDF versions of it until you've got enough reoccurring income coming in monthly to pay for the tools because you can go broke buying all these tools. Um, project management, I use Trello, it's free. Um, but I love better proposals. I don't know if I would use it if I had to pay the $39 every month. I probably would now because I'm, I'm doing very well on the monthly income. But, uh, you know, that monthly paying things out, don't like doing that. So um, just use PDFs and send it out. You may even want to split the, the proposal out from the contract. 
So they assign the proposal, then you send them the contract to sign. The nice thing about a PDF is you can put that in the corner for them to initial every page that they've read it. That has, that's one of the things I've requested from uh, Better Proposals that they, they do that. Um, tools, do it in Word. Um, Better Proposals, there's a link to that. Um, uh, Bid Sketch is another one, Proposify. 17 Hats, 17 Hats is kind of neat. They're pricey, but they have great deals at Black Friday. Um, Plutio is one I bought on AppSumo last year, or probably even two years ago, I'm waiting. Um, they don't, they, they've got their API in beta right now, but Plutio is actually like Trello and Better Proposals and a CRM all rolled into one. Um, and, but it, I can't get it to integrate with everything. So I want something that I can do something and send it to Trello, send it to this, send it to that. And right now they didn't have an API, so I'm just kind of holding on to that. But the API is in beta, so they'll probably have another AppSumo deal coming up in the next year. Um, guide the client, get on the phone, go over the proposal with them, so you can answer the questions right, right then and there if they have anything. Um, and then get money before you do any work. You may be excited about the project, but Get, get the money before you do any work. Now, stop stressing about proposals. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Next slide has links to everything. Any questions? Dave. Uh, lately I've been uh, including, like I said, better proposals, including a video of me walking through the proposal and highlighting it for them. Excellent suggestion. I'm so going to steal that. Um, what Dave said is what he does is he records a video of going through the proposal, includes that in the proposal, so he doesn't, it saves that step of having a phone call. And that's an excellent idea. Uh, use um, Loom. Use Loom.com for do, recording the videos. Um, I'm going to like start doing that this week. Yes. No, I, I pay the fee. Um, I'm connected to Stripe. Yes, it ends up being, you know, 20, 30, some dollars. But um, in the grand scheme of things for an $8,000 website, you know, now for a $23,000 website, um, send me a check. Um, because I really don't want to pay that 200 and some dollar fee. Yep. I also pay the fee because I'm happy to accept yep. it. Yep. Yeah, I need to remove that because I stopped doing that. Um, and uh, that's like, it needs to be updated. Yeah. So thanks for pointing that out because I didn't catch it the last time I went through it. Any other questions? Dave? I'm assuming you do not have pricing for your hourly rate or your um, care plans in your master's I have the I have the care plans. I just say that any additional work is at my currently hourly rate, which I, I, I've told them on, uh, verbally. Yeah. So your, your care plan, you put the pricing in there? Yes. The yes. So then what, how would you go back later on and say, um, I need to increase my price for $10? Well, eventually, you know, my prices for care plans will go up. But um, at that point, it's just like any other client. Uh, that it's going to increase um, like you would do for any legacy client when you're raising prices. Okay, so you have something in there that says that this pricing is for right now or a year or something. I don't have a time limit on it, but that's a good suggestion. So I've been thinking about how do mm -hmm. I make sure that I set it up to where I can not have a problem with people saying, oh, I thought you were in service and guaranteed forever to get that, that, mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. I don't have a legal problem. Okay, I'll ask that because I'm going to actually take this to the to the lawyer here in Georgia because this is kind of left over from Florida when I lived, there. <laughs> and I haven't been to the. But I'll make a note of that. I'll send you an email and let you know the answer. <laughs> Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you very much.
Yeah.